Hi guys, Richard here from Dabrail. Now, you may have heard in the news in the last few days, uh, depending on when you're watching this video, of course, that on Thursday the 16th of June, a first Great Western Class 165 DMU train became derailed in the Paddington area, causing uh, considerable damage to the overhead line equipment and causing huge, huge delays and, uh, and chaos in the area. Now, Network Rail have told us that the train ran a red signal, had a spad, and was automatically derailed. But having a look through the comment sections on some of the social media websites, people are asking, why was the train automatically derailed? Why wasn't it automatically stopped? Surely that would have been better. So, I thought I'd explain to you some of the possible reasons why the train may have been derailed instead of stopped. Okay, so one of the only things we know at the moment is the driver was involved in a uh, spad, that signal passed at danger. Now, the reasons for the driver having a spad could be numerous, and I'm sure that will be investigated by Network Rail and First Great Western in the fullness of time. There are actually 303 spads in the UK, signals passed at danger, in the UK in 2014 2015, according to the Network Rail website. Now, that may sound like quite a lot, but to put that into perspective, that actually equates to 0.0000046 per passenger journey. And thanks to systems such as TPWS, that's Train Protection Warning System, where the train's brakes are automatically applied should the driver approach a red signal too fast or pass a red signal, there hasn't been a single incident uh, involving a spad, a single fatality since the Labrook Grove incident in uh, 1999 and prior to that Southall in 1997 and believe it or not England actually has Europe's safest railway network. Okay well back to the burning question then, why did the train derail? Why was it automatically derailed? Why didn't it stop? Now it's important to remember at this point this is all speculation because at the time of making this video we didn't have all the facts but this is one of the possible explanations and it's down to the way uh, TPWS works, that's Train Protection and Warning System. Now the idea of TPWS is that if a driver approaches a red signal too fast or passes a red signal the train's emergency brakes are automatically applied bringing the train to a complete stand. Now TPWS won't necessarily prevent the driver from going past the red signal, but what it will do is ensure that the train stops within a safety zone beyond the signal known as the overlap. So for example you could have a point where two lines converge and beyond the signal there'd be an overlap before those two lines converge and the train would be stopped in this overlap before it reaches a potential fouling point or a potential conflict zone. Now, unfortunately, it's not always possible to fit TPWS. This could be because of signal sighting, available space, could be for numerous reasons. So the alternative is to fit derailers or catch points. And the purpose of these derailers and catch points is to derail a train before it reaches a potential conflict zone, a potential fouling point. One of the common reasons for using catch points and derailers is that there's not enough space available to safely stop a train should it pass the red signal. For example, a train passes a red signal, the emergency brakes are applied, but the time it takes to stop the train, there isn't sufficient space to stop it before it reaches the conflict zone. So therefore the train is derailed, which prevents the train moving in, potentially moving into the path of an oncoming vehicle. Now, this may sound all very dramatic, but it's important to emphasise that derailers and catch points are only typically found in low speed areas such as yards, stations and sidings. So, put simply, why did the train derail? Well, because that's exactly what the signalling system and the track was designed for it to do. And had it continued on, the consequences could have been much, much worse. Okay, I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them in the box below and I'll try and get back to you. And don't forget for more railway videos and modelling videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. <laughs>